Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and we've got some bad news for some of the folks working in the animation studio that oversaw the redesign of Sonic the Hedgehog for the live action Sonic movie. Uh, some of those folks are getting laid off for Christmas. They're getting laid off for Christmas because the Vancouver studio is shutting down. The animation studio responsible for Sonic movies redesign is reportedly closing down before Christmas. So that sucks. That really, uh, really sucks for them. And I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, before we get into the video more, we're going to talk a little bit about this. Talk about the Sonic redesign. Before we do that, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, we're closing in on 100,000 subs. And we really appreciate the support, guys. Thank you very much for that. So Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, this is really interesting because we've actually been singing the praises of Paramount for listening to the fandom for once. A lot of these movie studios, they keep, you know, plowing forward with idiotic ideas for existing franchises, and they usually pay the price at the box office. They pay the price, you know, with backlash from, from existing fandoms, etc. And the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, we've talked about before. Everybody's been talking about it. The original Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, looked like ass. He looked really, really bad. He looked like a very creepy, uh, kind of a creepy fursuit character. Did not look like Sonic the Hedgehog at all. And they went back, Paramount actually went back, listened to the fans, pushed the movie back, and surprise, surprise, they redesigned Sonic the Hedgehog. They released a new trailer. People are going nuts for this new trailer compared to the original trailer. Uh, it looks like a home run. No pun intended, right? Uh, no pun intended. This this looks more like Sonic the Hedgehog than what we had seen before. And the animation studio that supposedly was involved in this rework is shutting its doors. Um, but they're one of many worldwide. Now, I misunderstood this originally to, to mean that the entire company was shutting down. And that's not actually what's going on here. What's actually going on is the Vancouver studio is closing. So this coming from IGN. Uh, the animation studio responsible for one of the biggest glow-ups of the year in the Sonic redesign has reportedly been closed, according to CBC Canada, the Vancouver-based studio moving picture company, MPC, which was also behind the Academy Award-winning effects and animation on Life of Pi. I don't think we want that E on there. Has shut down. An email sent to the staff at the Vancouver branch on Wednesday reportedly announced the immediate closing, citing increasing external market pressures, specifically in Vancouver, compared to other places. Now, they have branches in Montreal, London, Los Angeles, uh, and India. And I know a lot of a lot more animation is being sent to other countries because it's cheaper. Let's be honest, it's cheaper. We've talked about that before. Netflix is jobbing more and more of its animation projects out to the Philippines. I know DreamWorks has been using India. And it stinks for North American animators. Uh, it seems like anymore, it seems like North America is kind of being used uh, to come up with the basic ideas and the storyboards. And then a lot of the work is actually sent overseas where the labor is cheaper. And that could be those external market pressures that they are talking about, specifically in Vancouver. Very expensive city compared to other places. Yeah, I just caught this. They actually have the uh, Sonic, Sonic logo from the title screen on this bandana. I actually never saw that before. Good work, guys. So Nintendo Wire goes on to explain the studio also played a significant role alongside Sonic Mania artist Tyson uh, Hesse. Is it Hesse? In turning Sonic from the version that drew considerable ire in the movie's first trailer to the much more true to the source image we've recently become familiar with. Here's a good comparison. Um, here's a good comparison. Yeah, I mean, this was Nightmare Fuel. This was Nightmare Fuel. You can see just how much that uh, they've changed things. It is actually pretty fun. It's like wiping the bad away. Wiping the bad away. Anyway, anyway. The redesign was reportedly the subject of extreme crunch, according to an alleged former employee on Reddit. Did the crunch time, did the crunch time of Sonic the Hedgehog cause the studio to shut down? Did they have to pay overtime? You know, what happened? We don't know. A number of staff the number of staff out of work so close to Christmas is currently unknown, but the Vancouver branch of NPC housed over 800 artists during its peak back in 2013. It's not yet known if any of the other studios across Montreal, London, LA, and India have been affected. Sadly, staff and their families aren't the only ones who feel the loss. According to CBC Canada, 
Executive Director of the Digital Media Association of BC, Brenda Bailey, stated that the MPC was very involved with the community and helped to educate students about the industry. Uh, that's horrible. You know, this is horrible. The company has not responded to CBC's request for interviews, but in the email it cited increasing external market pressures. The decision has not been taken lightly. Other movies they've worked on include The Lion King, Sonic the Hedgehog, Watchmen, uh, Call of the Wild. Uh, Brenda Bailey, who's the executive director of the Interactive and Digital Media Trade Association of BC, said it's a big loss for the city. Um, it's a huge loss. They said more needs to be done to create a competitive environment for the film industry in British Columbia due to the increased cost of doing business. I think there is a bit of uncertainty right now in terms of the tax credits and business doesn't thrive in uncertainty. In a statement, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Lisa Baer, said the government is disappointed to learn of the closure, but she remains confident in BC's thriving creative sector. The interactive and digital media industry generates approximately $2.3 billion each year in revenue. Yeah, this is a huge loss. This is a huge loss for Vancouver. But again, you know, these cities become more and more expensive. It's sort of this, you know, look what happened with um, San Francisco. You know, look what happened with San Francisco. Uh, I used to live right outside San Francisco when I was a teenager, and it was not affordable then. We're talking, you know, 20 years ago. And it's certainly not affordable now because you had all the tech companies uh, move in. And, you know, my parents had a house in San Francisco. They paid a hundred and well, right outside San Francisco. They paid $175,000 for it in the late eighties. And it wound up being worth just because of the, the plot of land it was on like over $2 million, you know, housing is incredibly expensive. So when you bring industry to, to cities, a lot of times, it also, you know, jacks up the uh, the cost of doing business. You know, it's sort of a double-edged sword. I mean, we definitely want uh, definitely want cities to thrive and industry to, to move in, you know, wherever it can. But what happens, you know, for the studios is they look at this and they're like, we have to pay them how much to animate this stuff? Can't we just ship all those people, you know, to another, another location that maybe isn't as expensive? And that's probably what's going on here. Uh, MPC is still in business. The company is still in business, but I imagine going forward that they're going to, you know, just job everything out to to other locations, other countries, possibly. Um, maybe they'll reassign the work. You know, who knows what's going on? And again, we don't know if Sonic played any role in shutting it down, but it's it's a bummer uh, to see it, it get closed down because, you know, animation industry here in the U.S., here in Canada, uh, North America, it's, it's getting harder and harder to actually get like legit animation jobs because so much of that that work is being outsourced uh, outside of North America. And a lot of times it's being outsourced to countries that that pay very, very little to their people. We talked about the situation with, you know, some of the uh, animation studios that Netflix uses. So, uh, you know, very unfortunate, uh, very unfortunate. I hope everybody finds, finds another job soon. But here's some of the, I mean, geez, here's some of the stuff that they've worked on just recently. Jungle Book, Blade Runner 2049, which I freaking love. The Martian Guardians of the Galaxy, X-Men. I mean, this is not a small studio. Prometheus, uh, Harry Potter, Sherlock Holmes, a lot of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah, they're, I mean, it's a big, look at this. This is insane how many movies this studio has worked on and, uh, you know, these folks are out of a job. So right before Christmas too. Uh, very, very sad to hear. But uh, please subscribe to Clownfish TV for more pop culture, news, views, and rants. Uh, hopefully we'll have better news next time. And good luck to all of those who were affected by this sudden job loss. Take care. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, 
Ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.